I'd like to know what qualities, I mean, we can just, you can just say them out loud. What qualities did you find admirable in the characters you thought of? So can you say them out loud? Leadership? Honesty? Honesty. Humble, humility, high performance, hum humility. Perseverance. Perseverance. Intelligence. Principle. Principle. Sacrifice. Sacrifice. Passion, creativity. creativity. Okay, any of the things that has been said, can you find any of these that are contradictory with a way of doing business? Can you imagine doing business passionately, creatively, humbly, um, with leadership, is it possible? Yeah. I mean, is that the way people do it? No. But, but, but that, that's the big opportunity. In general, people don't think of business as an arena to express their values. They think, oh, but there's a trade-off. Because if I act humbly, I get stepped on. Or if I show my passion, somebody's going to destroy me. And there's a lot of fear that if I truly put out what's dear to me, it can get hurt. And it's true. I mean, the more you expose yourself, the more you, you care about what you do, the more dangerous it becomes. So there's a matter of conscious choice. It's how do you want to live your life? But it's a bad excuse to say it cannot be done in business. It can be done in business. It takes a commitment to see business as an area for expression. Why, why would you do it? as a hobby and not do it in the main part of your life. When people, uh, one thing that uh, shocks me is when people talk about the life-work balance. So life or work. So the implicit assumption is that when you're working, you're not living. And when you're living, you have to be out of work because you have to balance these two things. If you work all the time, then you're not living. But think, how much time do you spend at work? How much of your awake time is spent working? So what happens if all that time that you're working is not time where you feel fully alive? You say, oh, no, no, when I meditate, I'm fully alive. How much do you meditate? I don't know, an hour a day, maybe. Most people don't meditate more than, I mean, if that, maybe five minutes a day. So if that's, if that's when you're alive, well, it's pretty sad. So what would it take to be fully alive as you face the challenges of work? There are you know, ways in which you can do this that will help you express your passion with skill. So those are the two things. The first thing I invite people to do is to connect with the music they have in their heart. And that's what we've done in this very little exercise. I'm not telling you what values you need to espouse, but you say, what do I admire in other people? And one of the things that Socrates said, the Greek philosopher, more than 2,000 years ago, one of the secrets of a good life is you have to put yourself in the list of people you admire. That's what it means to live a good life. If you put yourself in that list of admirable characters, when you look at your behavior, you feel, I am in that category, you're living a good life. If you don't put yourself in that list, you need to look. Because happiness is inherently correlated with the level of self-admiration that you have. Grounded self-admiration, not like, I'm great. It's not egomania. It's admiration because I have done things that ennoble me. So that's finding the music in your heart. And then the second is, well, how do you express this music skillfully? How do you learn? I mean, if we were talking about piano, you have the music in your heart. Well, then it's like, what are the finger exercises that will allow you to have the dexterity so that music you can translate from your mind into the world? And in business, well, you also need some finger exercises, some practices. And there are several practices that I describe in the book that take this passion and bring it to the level of practical realization that you need in order to produce results. So let me tell you four of those. I'll do it very quickly, but just four essential practices. In the book, I put seven. The first one I call unconditional responsibility. And unconditional responsibility is having an attitude of whatever the world brings to me it is my opportunity to respond. So it would be like the world moves, and then it says, now it's your move. And then after you move, the world responds, and it's your move again. And every time something happens, it's like, how am I going to choose to respond to this situation? 
In my experience, when people are in business, they feel overwhelmed. So look what happened to me. And when you are in a perspective of, oh, I'm a victim of circumstance, that is automatically self-disempowering. So think of something difficult that happened to you. I mean, it could be a traffic jam. It could be you know, somebody mistreated you or somebody forced you to do something you didn't want to do. I mean, there are all sorts of events daily that create this sense of, oh, look what happened to me. Now, without denying that those things happen, I mean, traffic jams are there. This is, this is not about everything is rosy. Now, ask yourself, how could I respond to this situation in a way that expresses my admirable quality? Think again. How could I respond to, so if you said humility, for example, or creativity or passion. So here's a traffic jam. What would, it, what would it mean to respond to the traffic jam with creativity? What would it mean to respond with passion? Uh, you got a request for a time that you think you cannot meet. So somebody says, I need this by tomorrow. And you look at this and say, there's no way I can finish this by tomorrow. Well, what does it mean to act with honesty in that moment? And you know that if you say, I don't think I can do it, something potentially bad can come your way. But if you say, I do it, you're you're lying because you don't think you can do it. One of the things I wanted to realize is that all the things people said, leadership, passion, humility, creativity, strength, perseverance, they are all qualities that do not depend on an outcome. Let me say this again because this is the essence of unconditional responsibility. is the understanding that what ennobles you is the way of responding seeking the result, but not having to achieve the result. Success is not one of the things that ennobles you, because success doesn't depend on you alone. You try to succeed, but your poise, your attitude, is the full expression of what's ennobling to you. So think about that. You see the, that none of the things people said requires success. Not only that. But let's take perseverance. So suppose that you are committed to express perseverance in your life. You want to live a life that exemplifies perseverance. What kind of situations are going to give you the right theater, the right scenario, the stage, to show world-class perseverance? What do you need? Failure. I mean, this, this is shocking. Because when you fail, and you don't understand this, what well, you say is, oh, shit, I failed. I and mean, this is terrible. But when you understand this, you say, oh, fertilizer. <laughs> I fail. Now, notice, notice that, I mean, it's the same situation. It doesn't, this is not like airy-fairy, it's a different world, everything's going to be OK. No, no, no. It's not going to be OK. But the difference is, what, what kind of resilience do you have when some bad thing happens, when you're faced with a challenge? Nothing happens to you. There are only challenges. And the only question is, how do you respond to this challenge? How do you unconditionally use any challenge to express the values that you have committed to express in your life?